Borda sit my dono do very boda Ron do e in vain cartef to wish oh in vain creation cartef to wish good morning how's your day Ben I'm Ron and welcome to my spooky house and it occurred to me that this uh, I'm on the balcony right now. Uh, I was about to take down my laundry. Cat, please don't. I swear. You're lucky you're cute. Thank you. He was trying to climb the screen door. And it occurred to me that this, uh, my, my balcony, my porch, I've called it the patio to the cats once or twice before. This is probably the only room of my apartment where I haven't, um, filmed a video yet. And why haven't I? There's not too much exciting going on out here right now. So, where was I going with this? It occurred to me. So, um, in my last uh, video that I actually like made the effort to um, edit and upload and all of that, that, um, that there are people in this town who are staring at me like when I'm out and about and like doing nothing more than they are, you know, like I'm trying to read a book by the river in the park, and they're just giving me this death glare, like I have no business being outside amongst civilized people. And so that got me, so that got me thinking about a video idea I'd, uh, I'd, I'd pitched to my friend, um, Adrian, um, over at Lygia Resurrected, but that's not what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna lead up to that. I'm gonna lead up to that. So this is the video that's going to lead up to that. This is the video where, um, seriously, Murnau, thank you, honey. Ah, oh, jeez. It's about ready to drive me nuts. So the 1980s was a really weird time to be a little kid. And I say this from experience because I was a little kid in you know, the 80s. So first off, like, people actually, be you know, believed, um, like, like, there had been kind of like, you know, but it, it was kind of accepted as some kind of urban legend, like in the 60s and 70s, because um, that's like when some of these stories started circulating that, like, oh, oh, they can, oh, like, like, like people are being horrible to children, like they're trying to, they're trying to injure children on Halloween, so they're putting razor blades in apples and poison in candy bars, and then they're returning the candy, you know, the Halloween candy to the store so that some unsuspecting person will then later purchase it again and I'm like uh, and like until like sometime in the last 10 years I want to say it was like maybe even in the last five like every um a confirmed case of this kind of thing happening every case of that until like maybe like the last five years I want to say it was like 2015 you know, like, some dipshit actually went and did it for realsies. But yeah, like, every case that had been so-called confirmed was, like, within a couple weeks, like, later revealed to have been a hoax. Like, 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 the kids, like, had heard these kinds of urban legends, like, going around, like, since the 60s and 70s and decided to prank their parents, you know, or, you know, like, they thought it was a funny prank to the parents, and then, you know, the police got involved, and they had to later admit that it went, that, 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 no, no, I did this myself, I did this myself, mom and dad, I thought it was gonna be funny, and then it just went too far, and, <laughs> yeah, but, like, nobody wants to look at the follow-up, so, yeah, like, like, I want to say, like, late 70s, very early 80s was when we started seeing these, like, you know, confirmed things that were later, like, revealed to be a hoax, but, Nobody pays attention to the follow-up stories, right? So that was a thing. Like, people were actually, like, believing that this was a real thing and not just, you know, like... Uh, uh, and, like, when it was... I, I remember one story specifically, like, you know, from Ohio was, you know, like, somebody was saying, like, like, uh, like it was sewing needles in a little fun-sized candy bar. And I'm like... First off, like, like this just, this just has to be, like, a, you know, something that a kid does. Because who would be stupid enough, right? Who would be stupid enough? I, I don't know. Whatever. Like I said, the 80s, it was a really weird time to be a little kid. And I say this from experience. And, you know, the, the, the 80s was also when, like, the whole world 
became convinced of stranger danger. And I think a lot of that had to do with the um, so-called satanic panic, which went back, uh, I forget what state it was in, but, like, people's lives got, got ruined, like, you know, because of this, and it all turned out to be a hoax. It was just mass hysteria. It was, uh, but yeah, there was this one, there was this one, like, really, really famous, famous for, you know, infamous case, this daycare, preschool, whatever, and I think about, I, I want to say like 1983, but there was this book um, that preceded that, something like Michelle Remembers, where like she's just rattling off these like really bizarre frickin' stories. Um, and it was, it was first published as like a true crime thing, but uh, later, like in subsequent republishings, I think has been reclassified as like conspiracy theories or um, or something like that but yeah like it's it's no longer considered it like the publisher no longer you know is publishing it you know as uh, as true crime they're they're calling it a conspiracy theory kind of thing yeah like they they no longer consider it a true crime you know story because like look I want to say that the novel I'm calling it a fucking novel because that's what it is it's, it's all fiction it's all fucking fiction um and there's some really good pages on um, on um, religioustolerance.org and a couple other places that like go like point by point like w why this was all just mass hysteria. It, it, it was it was like the Salem witch trials. On, you know, like only it was 1980s and mostly contained to the Midwest. I noticed this. Um, I'm not sure if. I'm not sure where that daycare center was. You know what? I'm going to stop the video here and go fact check a couple things real quick. Okay, so, yeah, it was Michelle Remembers. That was published in 1980. And then later, uh, I want to say 83, was the McMartin... Um, I just looked at it. Uh, was the McMartin uh, preschool trials um, uh, allegations. And that was in California. And why is this clump of hair matted. What the hell? Um, so, oh my gosh. And this is all things that, like, never should have happened. First off, like, like I said, the, uh, the Michelle remembers that the, the publisher, like, does not want to publish this as true crime anymore. It's, it's been published as, like, conspiracy theory or something since then. And rightly so. It's just, like, like, it's shit that is just so so bizarre, right, that you sit there and you ask yourself, like, like, this is, like, we're not talking about, um, we're not talking about, like, like, the colonial Puritans or anything, right? We're talking about an age where, you know, like, people are eagerly engaging in science and all of that, but still, but still, you know, like, by, like, 1984, for there were um, trials against um, uh, the, the musicians. I remember because Frank Zappa was uh, was involved in this. Yes, yes, Murnau. Yeah, you don't remember it. You weren't there. You you absolutely were not, honey. But uh, but yeah, like I remember Frank Zappa was involved. Of course, I remember that. My mother was a, was a retired groupie by that time. Um, and so, yeah, like, Dee Snyder, Twisted Sister, was also really involved in that, um, as well. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, and, and so, of course, like, you know, like, like, I mean, heavy metal was, like, at the top of, like, their satanic music, uh, but, you know, obviously, like, Frank Zappa, and I know, um, Prince's Dirty Mind record was... Um, brought in on that, even though it was, like, about four years old at that time. Um, so, yeah, it's, like, not just heavy metal was under attack during this just satanic panic period. And a lot of that all had to do with how radicalized um, Reagan, as in Ronald Reagan, as in the 40th president, of the United States of America, like he'd got, he'd managed to get like the uh, like like the like conservative evangelical Christians really radicalized and 
Um, I know it was just in large part a, com a campaign strategy. I don't remember exactly like how much he was personally invested in all of that. I know Nancy, um, she had an astrologer on the White House staff. So, you know, it, 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 she, she clearly was like, you know, it, we're assuming they were, I think officially they were Episcopalian. I think. Um, but obviously, you know, like, she, you know, she wasn't like this, like, ultra-conservative fundamentalist type, because, like I said, she, she had a goddamn astrologer, like, like, um, shit, what's her face? Kim, um, Kim, Kate, the, 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 the goddamn bitch who looks like she's, she's straight out of, um, misery, right? You know, she, she dresses like, like the, crap, I'm brain farting on shit. By the way, Aldi has wine for two dollars and fifty cents. Like, I think I spend more on Boone's Farm. I think no, I definitely spend more on Manischewitz. I don't remember about Boone's Farm. Uh, I don't remember how much that costs lately. But um, this isn't bad wine. Like for two fifty, for two fifty, you get you know it's for two for two dollars and fifty cents. It's actually pretty decent. Um, if I was paying more than that, it'd be like. It's all right, you know. It's it's edible, right? But anyway, where was I going with this, right? So obviously, like all kinds of music, you know, that wasn't like you know, like Pat Boone and his daughter Debbie, like you know, like this was like or and the Osmonds and shit. Uh, so yeah, it's like you know anything, you know, like, all kinds of music was just, like, under attack, like, there, there were, like, goddamn federal hearings over it, you can find clips on YouTube, I have seen them on YouTube, I have shared them from YouTube with various people I know, especially the Frank Zappa clips, because you could tell, like, like, how seriously he was taking the fact that he had to take time out of his day to get involved in this. Um, you could also tell how seriously he takes, you know, he, he took things like, you know, First Amendment, um, especially regarding the arts, and you could tell how, how lacking his respect for, you know, people like Tipper Gore and all of that was. Like, you could, t <laughs> you could tell, like, you know, everything from, like, his posture and, like, the very subtle you know, inflections in his voice, he just, he, he was so contemptuous of certain people involved in this, uh, but had, like, the utmost respect for the other artists who came to, you know, who got involved in this and, you know, were, you know, defending, you know, their rights as artists to, you know, like, be goddamn musicians and, you know, speak what they wanted to but where was i going with this right yeah so like the 80s the 80s was like a really weird time to be a little kid uh because it's so, like when my when my parents were little kids in the 40s and 50s um you know like the, it, it was it was common it was common place for kids to just like you know like go and greet new neighbors who move on to the block there was this idea that kids were generally kind of smart like yes kids are stupid in many ways, but um, but a smart kid will trust their gut and like stay out of dangerous situations for the most part. For the most part, you know, like like, like we're still talking kids, but you know, and we admit that yes, like kids can be pressured by other vicious tykes their own age. Uh, thank you, Matt Groening, for that phrase. Um, but uh, but like a smart kid will trust their gut and um and and not get into like especially bad trouble right like a smart kid will trust their gut and maybe seven times out of ten stay generally safe the other three times out of ten for the most part like we're talking like you know like like you fall off the monkey bars you bump your knee right <laughs> you know or maybe you fall off the monkey bars and you know you, you get a gash in your head and you have to go and get stitches but it's like still it's like well 
these things sometimes happen. But by the 80s, you know, like not only... Uh, so in the 70s, a lot of... And I'm not just saying this because, like, you know, because of media at the time, like, uh, like Stepford Wives, like, you know, like the original, um, um, you know, thriller-themed, you know, film, uh, but, uh, but also, um, uh, oh, what's that other movie? Oh, yeah, like Kramer versus Kramer and all that. There, like, there was, uh, there were a lot of middle-class women. Because, see, like, this was a thing. This was a thing that, like, a lot of people, like, always, like, kind of leave out. It's like, so, yeah, like, working-class women have always worked. Like, there was no such thing as, you know, a, a stay-at-home mother under a certain socioeconomic class. Like, uh, like, yes, like, this was the ideal shoved down the average American's throat, you know, like, for forever, but, um, you know, when, when you're of you know, a certain grade of working class, it is, you know, like, it's just like, no, that's a pipe dream. Like, maybe, maybe my daughter will marry well enough to, you know, go, uh, you know, be able to be a stay-at-home mother, but I'm not holding out, you know, too high hopes for it, so whatever. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, working class mothers worked. Like, that's why it's called the working class, because everybody worked. Um... And, uh, so, but, yeah, like, middle-class women, middle-class women, like, you know, like, they, they real, they were kind, a lot of them were very much invigorated by feminists, which is why, you know, there's that whole, like, thriller-type angle to Stepford Wives. Uh, this, this was kind of, like, done up as, like, kind of, like, it, it was kind of like making some social commentary on men's fears of feminism, um, and, um, and the fears, like, women had, you know, for, you know, even just wanting to break that mold. So, yeah, so, like, uh, like, like, second wave feminism, like, really, um, kind of inspired a lot of middle class mothers to, you know, like, you know, like, go back to university, or, you know, like, just, like, go out and, or, like, you know, they had their bachelor's degree in something before they got married, and then they got married and had kids, and they thought this was just how life was supposed to be, but then they, you know, they, they saw, like, Gloria Steinem rally, you know, clips on the news and got really invigorated, and they went out and got a copy of Ms. Magazine, and then they decided, you know, I, I want to go back to the secretary pool at the office, and so, uh, so yeah, like, then we had this, uh, this, this, this epidemic in the late 70s and early 80s of latchkey kids, and so that's, like, suddenly, like, middle-class kid, like, suddenly it's not a problem until it's, like, you know, especially white middle-class kids, right? Like, yeah, you know, like, like, when it's, like, working-class, you know, kids, like, my family, like, my dad and my mom when they were growing up, like, all that, like, what is working class kids, it's like, yeah, like, you know, this, this is just a fact of life that they're gonna come home, and, like, you know, both parents are probably gonna still be out working or something, uh, like, maybe there's an older sibling home already, and, you know, getting dinner started, but, like, no, like, that's just, like, what the, that's, like, what those people do, um, you know, like, especially if you are of color, uh, <laughs> right? But no, no, like, it's, it's white middle class kids, you know, that, that suddenly, like, you know, like, are coming home from school, and, like, and, like, mom is not there, waiting with a, with a, with a plate full of, you know, like, fresh fruit, and asking, like, how your day was, and are you, am I gonna help you with your homework, little Johnny? And little Johnny is just like, you know, like, okay, well, I'm home, I guess I could start on my homework, or I could go walk, goof off and watch, you know, television. Like, I'm sure there's reruns of something on right now, like, I don't know, like, Jackie Gleason, I don't, we're talking the 70s, right? So, um, so yeah, and, and that's when suddenly, like, there was this push to, like, to teach kids stranger danger, and see, this is the thing, I, and that's why I bring up, like, when my parents were kids in the 40s and 50s, that, um, that for the most part, like, for the most part, most parents around that time, you know, just, like, yes, you know, it was, it was expected that you would, you know, like, be at least somehow involved in your child's life, but... For the most part, most people thought nothing of just, like, letting their kids run wild and free as long as you didn't, you know, as long as they didn't devolve into Lord of the Flies or something, you know, and came home for dinner 
and that was fine, right? Um, you know, they, they, you generally trusted your kids to, you know, hopefully trust their gut and not get into, you know, in anything too dangerous. And, you know, or if they did, you trusted that they would have friends who would come, like, and say, like, hey, little Timmy fell down the well and all of that, right? So, uh, so yeah, like, like, um, and, and for the most part, that is actually, like, the best thing to teach kids is just like trust your gut if a situation feels like it's dangerous it probably is and you want to get out of it as soon as possible if you somehow cannot get out of it do whatever to keep yourself safe right so like this is this is for the most part what you should be teaching kids and we are suddenly you know like in like the 2010s up to now like society is relearning that oh that's right like like that's like around 2010 i want to say that's where i started seeing articles saying that like oh no actually oh gosh in fact like there was even a south park episode about it about like how um about how like the biggest threat to kids the biggest threat to kids uh, especially children but anybody like of any age of any age anybody of any age is at greatest risk to those you keep closest. Um, so, like, your family members, um, if you're old enough, um, you know, your significant other, um, then your friends, then um, family friends, and, you know, people you know well enough and trust well enough that it, it, it would just be really shocking if they hurt you. But, you know, statistically speaking, you are far more likely to be, like, seriously harmed or kidnapped or, or nether regions assaulted by somebody you, by somebody you feel you know well enough and who up until that point, who you trusted, right? Um, you know, especially when you're a child, especially when you're a child, because, like, when you're a child, and see, that's the thing about kids, it's like, kids, kids very naturally want to please adults. They want to please the authority figures in their life, um, especially their parents. Um, and when I'm talking kids, I'm talking, like, prepubescent, because, like, around, like, you know, the ages of, like, 11 through 13, when most people, like, you know, puberty starts, contrary to common belief, puberty is actually a, a, a process that takes the body about 15 years to complete. So, like, it starts when you're about 11 or, or 12, it ends when you're, like, in your late 20s, and that's when, like, the, uh, the, the various, like, cerebral cortex of your brain, you know, um, finish, like, physically developing, and that's when you get a better control over your emotions and all of that. So, you so seldom hear about kids who were, um, who, who were bad touched by complete strangers. I mean, yes, when you do, like, I'm not trying to diminish anything here, but, like, when you do hear of that, and it, it is absolutely horrible, it is absolutely horrible, and it just, but statistically speaking, you are far more likely to be harmed by somebody who you feel you know and who you feel you can trust at least up until the point where they hurt you. But, you know, like, that's, um, that's, that's just, like, how it works out. So, the, like, the whole thing, the whole deal of stranger danger is overwhelmingly, albeit not completely, it, it, it's more urban legend than it is a fact of life, right? So, like, you know, like the best thing to teach kids is, you know, like, trust your gut if you feel like this... And, and, yeah, there are going to be kids with, um, certain developmental difficulties. Um, I think, uh, Wilson Syndrome, I think, is one of them, where, like, um, you know, they're, they're a little, um, cognitively, um, uh, slower to develop, and, like, one of the, one of their personal one of their... Uh, personality traits common with that one is that uh, they're just especially trusting of 
you know, of everybody, of people, of especially, like, adults when they're children. So, uh, so yeah, like, yeah, there are going to be exceptions. You're going to have to, like, every so often you're going to have to, you know, tailor this to a, a specific kid's needs. But for the most part, you teach your kids, you know, like, stranger danger is not really, is for the most part not a thing. It's not something that you will typically have to worry about, but... Um, you know, like, most importantly is trust your gut, you know? Uh, so yeah. So yeah, because of all of this, because of, like, the whole satanic panic that, like, kind of kick-started the 80s, and the whole, like, moral outrage from conservative evangelical Christians that were being, like, radicalized, like, starting with the Reagan era, and, you know, with, with of him in office, and... Um, because of, like, the whole, like, thing with the, with the heavy metal music and all of that, and, like, oh, and the latchkey kids and stranger danger, like, what if somebody's gonna, gonna, gonna bad touch my poor white middle class child? I'm like, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, because of that, now, I don't know, like, how far and wide this program s stretched, but, um, before a child was allowed to start kindergarten, uh, in Toledo, Lucas County, Ohio, in the mid-1980s, you first had to pass Safety City. This was an approximately six-week course um, where, like, you, you went into this little classroom and they taught you. For the most part, it was, um, you know, it was like teaching kids about, like, um, like, like traffic v. pedestrian safety, um, stuff like, you know, don't approach a strange dog, you know, like, ask the person that the dog is with first, um, if the dog is, like, stray without a human around, um, you know, still don't approach the strange dog, you know, because, like, strange dogs, you know, without a person around can be unpredictable, go tell an adult you trust. And, of course, like, stranger danger, razor blades in the candy and all that, you know, like, go have your, 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 uh, your candy x-rayed at the police department, it's like, pfft. Like, <laughs> like, my mother was a nurse, she, she knew, like, she was an ER nurse, too, and uh, I think she did, like, one shift with that, with that shit one year, with the, uh, with the, with the candy, you know, stuff at the hospital, I think she, she was called in for one shift for that one year, and just thought it was just complete horse shit. So, yeah, like, like, it's, like, especially from then on, she's just like, nope, 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 we're just gonna... I'm just gonna, like, look over, like, whatever, and, you know, and for the most part, trust you, you know, if anything looks weird to you, come show it to me, I'll be the final judge, but I trust my kids to, like, you know, not bite into an apple if there's a huge-ass razor blade sticking out of it. <laughs> I don't know why people thought that was true. I, oh, God. Especially, like... The the, uh, the the Michelle remembers and the McMartin preschool case like like read some of the transcripts from this, especially the McMartin preschool case. Like some of this is just so clearly horseshit that children made up because they were being asked, not only because they were being asked leading questions by you know pe both parents and professionals, but were also like. Like, like, these kids were being backed into a corner to just, like, say something. Say something. Just... And I think it all started over something just completely innocuous, like... Uh, okay, so pardon any, um, pops or smacks from Dry Mouth, but I was actually just, um, re, uh, rechecking that, and the one kid who was the first family that come forward who was likely actually being abused, likely the only kid in that trial who was... At likely to be abused um his he was most likely being abused by a family member um but of course being a child didn't want to you know didn't want to get a beloved member of the family in trouble uh there was also issues later in the in the in the trial hearing whatever that um that his mother had been diagnosed some years before he was even born to be a schizophrenic. So, um, we're not sure which family member was abusing this, this little, um, boy, uh, but he's likely the only one who actually was. So I was, I was wrong. It was not something, you know, some kind of stupid childhood thing. It was, he was 
almost certainly being abused um, by somebody, but definitely nobody at the school or associated with the McMartin family in any way. So, because that, I think the whole McMartin preschool case, like, first off, that never should have gone to court. That never should have gone to court because, like, I mean, leading testimony aside, some of the things these kids were documented as, like, saying occurred, it, it's just so clearly horseshit, right? But no, but no, but, but like, people are all being swept up into a moral panic hysteria, so, of course, right? Um, but yeah, Safety City, Safety City. You had to pass Safety City, and, like I said, for the most part, it's stuff that, you know, to you and I, as adults, is just basic common sense. But, to a kid who's, like, four going on five, because my birthday's in the middle of summer, and, of course, Safety City happened, you know, during that six weeks in the middle of summer, like, you know, for, like two hours a day, I had to, like, get up out of my goddamn home and go to my Safety City class, and I think it was, like, only, like, two or three times a week, which is probably why it lasted so long, but whatever. It's just, like... But, uh, but still, so, uh, you know, like, they teach you what, like, various, like, you know, like, street traffic signs look like, and, uh, and so, here's... Here's, here's a lesson that I learned at Safety City that stuck with me for the rest of my life. And that lesson is sometimes people don't actually want the truth. Sometimes people just want the answer that they want. And I learned that at Safety City. Uh, like I said, I'm like four, maybe just barely five years old at the time. And... So the teacher at Safety City is teaching us, uh, is, is telling us, you know, like, first the traffic lights, you know, you got your red, your yellow, your green. Okay, this is your standard U.S. traffic light, red, yellow, green. Uh, but then, like, for the pedestrians at the crosswalk, there's, now, this is the 80s, so it all, so they all said it in words, whereas now I think most cities have switched at least most of their signs there are some still in the Ann Arbor Ipsy area that are still like in words, but most of them have already been switched to like, you know, the hand glyph for don't walk, you know, whereas in the 80s it just said don't walk. And then the lower one is the little, you know, like person walking glyph, and that, you know, is for walk, whereas in the 80s it said in words walk. So, um, and the teacher's saying, and don't walk is in red, and walk is in green. Now, if you, like myself, have lived in any major city in your state since the 1980s, you know what color those lights are in, like, don't walk and walk. Don't walk is more of an orangey color, and walk is usually white, though, um, by the corner by my house, um... It was kind of a yellowy color because that's how long it had been since the city had gotten anybody in there to like you know clean out the uh, the the cigarette smoke tar and bugs and all of that. So it was kind of a yellowy color, and so I raised up my hand and I said to the teacher, and when the teacher called on me, I said, "But the but the don't walk and walk signs by my home are orange and yellow," because like I said, it was kind of a yellowy white. Because that's how long it had been since the city had sent anybody to, like, clean out cigarette smoke tar and bugs and whatnot. So, uh, and she said, no, they are always red for don't walk and green for walk. And that's what I had to put on my paper to get a passing grade in that, you know, on that worksheet. You know, um, she sent it back to me until I wrote down the right answer, or, you know, like, selected the right answer, whatever. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's when, and I can see with my own eyes that this, that these signs were not red and green. They were orange and white or yellow, depending on your street corner and how long it had been since the city had had those cleaned. So, and uh, I, I told my mother about that, and... Then I saw her talking, I don't remember what she was saying to the teacher, and my mother's long dead at this point, so I don't think I'm ever going to find out what she said to the Safety City teacher, but, uh, but yeah, like, that's, that's kind of when I learned, um, when I was, like, four or five years old, that it doesn't matter, like, sometimes it just doesn't matter 
So people may tell you that they want to hear the truth, but sometimes they really just don't. They just want to hear the answer that they want to hear. And it doesn't matter what the truth is to them. Um, it doesn't matter what you say. Uh, it doesn't matter, like, they, uh, they just want to hear what they want to hear. They, they don't want the truth. They don't want reality. They just want to hear what they want to hear. And, and that, my friends, is probably the biggest reason I think that the 1980s was a really weird time to be a little kid. Because you were getting all of these like conflicting messages about everything from everywhere and things that seemed like uh, things that seemed like a good idea at the time like teaching children stranger danger like on closer inspection in fact on closer like the, the facts haven't changed the facts haven't changed it's just um it, it's just that's what people wanted to hear at the time because the facts haven't changed it's always like the, like the number one um, um, most likely threat to a child is going to be their parents um, in cases of divorce or otherwise single parenthood, um, the significant other of any one or both of their parents, then any other family members, family friends, vicious tykes their own age. Um, as we see in the case of Mary Bell and whatnot, but it, it, it's like, like on, like I said, the facts haven't changed. The facts haven't changed. The situation hasn't changed. Uh, Stranger Danger was always more nonsense than good sense, because you know, because that's just that people didn't want to believe. People didn't want to believe that you know the facts, looking them in the face. Like y you would see, you you see the you see these cases. It, it's just so much more enticing to you know like find these these little like th these little oddball cases of you know like like a, like like the like the uh, like the like the child killer of Atlanta who would just like literally pick up random kids, relatively speaking. But it was also in a neighborhood where he was generally familiar with things so it's like you know like most of these like you know seemingly random like even albert fish like m so many of his victims were the kids of people he had once worked for like you know like doing odd job kind of shit right so like not a complete stranger somebody that a child would you know, find easy enough to talk to, like, especially, you know, like, even an especially, especially a, a, a very friendly child, right? Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's a thing, that's a thing, like, like I said, the facts, the facts haven't changed, the reality hasn't changed, um, but, like, in the 80s, it was just such a weird time, because, like I said, like, people were more interested in, what they wanted to hear than they were in facts and so it's like now it's like i i can barely go a week without seeing a friend like circulating a um you know an article from like new york uh new new york times or what or you know whatever uh that says uh um you know how like you know like Oh, well, it turns out teaching kids stranger danger f between 1977 and 1996 was just like just the worst thing to do because it turns out that kids are more likely to be abducted by their parents, yeah, by the parents of a divorce, or more are likely to be m molested by a family friend or trusted fa or trusted family member or yeah or or, or, or their soccer coach. It's like right, like like this is the facts haven't changed. The facts haven't changed, but. Like I said, the 80s was a really weird time to be a kid because, um, because because it was a time when all good sense had just like been shot in the head, and then you like danced around good sense's little little grave like like daisies are coming up from good sense, 
like like good sense is already fertilizing and worm food and you're just you know like and like parents are are dancing around this like they like they've just had a victory over all good sense that they were raised with uh, but then again, like the '80s, like that's that's like the that's that's like the generation where you get like the younger end of baby boomers becoming first-time parents, and and of course, and then there's you know cases like my parents where they were a little bit on the older end of the baby boom generation. Like my dad, my dad, much like myself. Um, my dad was born in one of those like liminal years where depending on the U.S. generational chart you're looking at, he was either, you know, amongst the first of the baby boomers or amongst the last of the silent generation, which was, you know, the generation before, born mostly, um, to, uh, I want to say like mid-20s through about 1942 or 43, depending on, you know, which chart you're looking at. Uh, my mother was born in 1944. Five, um, so uh, so yeah, and my parents were, you know, like pfft, my parents were pushing forty when I was born. Uh, I mean, my parents had decent sense, uh, but they were also a bit older than most parents of people my age. But, um, where was I going with this? Uh, yeah, that's that's about it. That's like the eighties was a really weird time to be a little kid, and I pretty much got a crash course in why it was a really weird time to be a little kid because uh, when I was like four years old and sitting in my safety city class that I had to like by or I can't remember if it was the city the county or the state but I remember like I said if you grew up in Toledo um, in the in the in the mid '80s, if you had to take Safety City class in the mid '80s before you were allowed to enter kindergarten, and this went for both public and parochial school, or at least that's the impression I got because I had to do Safety City before I started kindergarten, and my kindergarten was at Saint Adalbert, which is a Catholic school run by Felician nuns. But uh, but yeah, where was I going with this? Right, yeah. Um, uh, other than that, um. I guess that's it, that, yeah, like, it was a really weird time to be a little kid because, um, all good sense had been shot in the head and parents were doing a victory dance around good sense and it didn't matter what the facts were, all that mattered is the answer that they wanted, which was that strangers were lining up to snatch their little children for some reason, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, I guess that's about all I've got right now. Um, as always, do take care of yourselves, wear your sunscreen, and a, uh, a big thank you. I've got, uh, I've actually got a fifth Patreon supporter now, and I should have checked her name. Crap. Eh. I don't want to pause this and then come back. I really don't. I'm gonna, like enter everybody's names down below, um, of my, uh, on my Patreon supporters, um, which includes, um, brand new, uh, five dollar a month person who's very, very kind, and I sent her a thank you note, and I'm already forgetting her name, but, um, so, uh, you know, thank you to all five of my Patreon supporters, I'm forgetting the new person's name, so I'm not gonna name everybody else, they're just all gonna, like, be listed in the description box below. If you have more dollars than cents, feel free to contribute to my Patreon, or at least I've got a PayPal tip jar, and I would like to order fish and chips from the place that I like, um, to, um, like, I don't know, one of these nights soon, but I'm already broke, I'm already broke, it's like...